blue skies soar over an increasingly unstable atmosphere. A tornado watch is issued. An isolated thunderstorm rises high into the atmosphere. Precipitation begins to fall. Sheets of rain reflect, refract and disperse sunlight into the visible color spectrum. Cloud to ground lightning activity increases as the storm begins to rotate. Unbelievable. I've never seen a rainbow like this before. The entire freaking sky. It's like two of them. Unbelievable. One side to the other. Whoa! <laughs> Thunder. Yeah. There it went again. So check this out. It's raining here in Boulder. I've got the sun directly behind me. You can see my shadow right there, right? And that bright spot around my head, kind of neat. That's called Heiligen shine. It's a halo from the raindrops in the, in the grass reflecting light right back in the direction it came. So it makes it look brighter there. But the cool thing is, it's raining, and that means we have a rainbow. And not just a rainbow, but a gorgeous double rainbow. Look at that. It's really bright. Spectacular. The primary, you can see the inside to the outside goes from uh, blue, purple to, to red. And you can see supernumerary arcs in there, and those are the sort of the teal and violet arcs. And then uh, there's a dark band in between the two. And then the secondary rainbow. Oh, saw that. Was that lightning up there? Huh. I'll have to check the video when I'm done here. Maybe it was. Yeah. I'm thinking that was lightning. Holy crap. All right, I'm not going to hang out here too much longer. But you can see the secondary rainbow with the colors reversed because there's an extra reflection inside the raindrops. In between the rainbow, it's dark because the raindrops in there are reflecting light away from us. In here, they're bound, I shouldn't say reflecting, it's actually bending it's, and the light's going in different directions. But inside the rainbow, they're actually sending a light back to us so it's brighter. There's more light coming from inside the rainbow, less light coming from outside. You get the primary, secondary, supernumerary arcs, pretty amazing. A lot of great optical effects going on here. And of course, the Heiligen shine. And if I turn around exactly 180 degrees, boom, there's the sun. And you can see the raindrops falling. And that's what's causing all this. Awesome.
Let's turn in our Bibles to Revelation chapter 4. And this, uh, this uh, topic that we're going to study today deals with two chapters in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 4 and also chapter 5. Now verse 3 gives us the physical appearance of the one who is seated on the throne who just happens to be God the Father. Notice verse 3, and he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone. Now uh, jasper and sardius are deep red stones. In other words, it's like God is surrounded by fire. That's the idea. And so it says, he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Now the rainbow represents a mixture of justice and mercy. Which means that this scene, when this scene is taking place, the door of mercy is still open as indicated by the rainbow. You remember that after the flood, God showed Noah the rainbow, indicating that he would not destroy the world with another flood, representing God's justice, which he had meted out in the flood, but also his mercy in saving Noah and his family. So basically, this scene is taking place while the door of mercy is still open. On October 23, 2015, a ring appeared above Siberia, and this ring was actually witnessed by a group of individuals, and it was also photographed. This ring appears to be whitish, but it has sort of a rainbow-looking color, like it's got several different colors in it if you look very closely. Uh, above this ring are two lights. It appears that these are also unidentified flying objects. You know, you can't really tell what they are. They just look like bright lights. This was around the time, allegedly, that CERN was going to be powering up to 13 TeV. So around this time, it was expected CERN was going to reach one of their highest energy capacities in the hunt for a black hole in order to open up a parallel dimension in something called gravity's rainbow. Now this isn't me making this up or theoretical at all. This is what they're doing and they've actually put this up on their website in recent days. So that's this is their ambition. They put it up. It's on their website. They're trying to open a black hole in gravity's rainbow. Well, this ring appeared around that time when CERN was supposed to be at 13 TeV. It's also kind of rainbow colored, which I found really, really unusual. Now, there's been a lot of people commenting on the various CERN watch videos that I've posted so far saying, keep science with science, you know, don't mesh science with religion. All they're doing is trying to find particles. And I addressed some of that in the last video, but in this video, I really just want to show that this is what the scientists are saying. Not me, not people out there that study the occult or religious people or spiritual people. No, this whole extra dimension thing is actual verbiage coming from the physicists themselves. So first off, CERN on their Facebook page just posted about an hour ago that they are feeling happy. Physicists at CERN are excited that hashtag restart LHC is nearly here. You could even say they're happy and uh, happy international happy day to everybody. And if you look here, uh, here they are dancing to the song happy. Now, I'm just going to play a little bit of this clip in the background as I talk to you about an article that was produced on IFL Science. Dot com And there were several people that sent me the link yesterday. The article is called Large Hadron Collider Could Detect Extra Dimensions. And it cites a ScienceDirect.com paper called Absence of Black Holes at LHC Due to Gravity's Rainbow. And again, this is the scientists talking. Now let me read a couple quotes from the article. This is the first paragraph. It says, A paper in physics letters B has raised the possibility that the Large Hadron Collider could make a discovery that would put its previous triumph with the Higgs boson in the shade. The authors suggest it could detect many black holes. Such a find would be a matter of huge significance on its own, but might be an indication of even more important things. And uh, it goes through here. I will link to the article in the description section. The final paragraph reads as, quote, such a discovery would demonstrate the microscale deformation of space-time, the existence of extra dimensions 
parallel universes within them, and string theory. If found at the right energy levels, the holes would confirm the team's interpretation of a new theory on black hole behavior named Gravity's Rainbow after the influential novel. Such an astonishing quadruple revelation would transform physics, although the researchers are already considering the most likely flaws in their work if the holes prove elusive. So, there you go. They are saying that this whole extra dimension thing is possible. And let me just read for you the abstract of the paper, Absence of Black Holes at LHC Due to Gravity's Rainbow. Here's the abstract. Quote, In this paper, we investigate the effect of Planckian deformation of quantum gravity on the production of black holes at colliders using the framework of gravity's rainbow. We demonstrate that a black hole remnant exists for Schwarzschild black holes in higher dimensions using gravity's rainbow. The mass of this remnant is found to be greater than the energy scale at which experiments were performed at the LHC. We propose this as a possible explanation for the absence of black holes at the LHC. Furthermore, we demonstrate that it is possible for black holes in six and higher dimensions to be produced at energy scales that will be accessible in the near future. And it gets into all of the science and math behind this theory. And I will have that in the description section as well. So, there you go, folks. This whole idea of extra dimensions and all this stuff is not just crazy religious talk or crazy spiritual people talk. But let me wrap up with a quote from Robert Jastrow, who was an American astronomer. He was a physicist and a cosmologist. He was a leading NASA scientist, and he was a very popular futurist. And one of his famous quotes is this quote, For scientists who have lived by his faith in the power of reason, the story ends like a bad dream. He has scaled the mountain of ignorance. He is about to conquer the highest peaks, and he pulls himself over the final rock. He is greeted by a band of theologians who have been sitting there for centuries. End quote. So the Christian worldview has supported, and many religious worldviews, have supported this idea of a spiritual dimension or a different dimension or a different realm that is layered above ours. And, you know, we've been talking about that for a very long time, and now science is catching up to those realities. So there you go, guys. Some information from the mouth of science. Hope you guys have a great day. God bless. <laughs>